Welcome to Adapt and Lesson. Thank you for joining this channel and thank you for selecting this um, video to watch. I know fluid and electrolyte is a big problem, uh, but I'll try and make it as much easy as much as possible, uh, and make it user friendly um, so that you can you become more um, usable for you when you take exams and or practice questions so that you can understand it better. Um, so let's get to it. Uh, before that, um, let's look at this question and see if we can do it. I will show you how to do it. Then when we finish the lecture, we'll come back to it. And then you can select and see what uh, your answer choice are. And this is caring for a client who need hypertonic solution infusion. Which of the following the next should select? Select that up question. So what they need to do is for you to do is to go back and read it again. It's a set of question, what is being asked? Which of the following the next should select? That means I need to select one of these uh, fluid. And this is caring for a client who need hypertonic solution, infusion. So the fluid has to be hypertonic, that's a buzzword. And I need to select a couple of them. And then it has to be a set of question. So hypertonic fluid solution means the concentration is greater than the extracellular fluid. Therefore, I'm picking something that is more concentrated than extracellular fluid. Your clue is extracellular fluid concentration is usually close to um, normal saline. So 0.9% um, normal saline. So um, anything that is greater than this, I'm not picking it. I'm picking it. That's your answer. So D10 um, is dextrose and 10% is hypertonic solution. 3% is greater than when 9% of normal saline, you got to pick it. D5 is usually isotonic solution. Um, in addition to 0.45% normal saline, this become hypertonic solution. A D5W is also hypertonic solution. LR is an isotonic solution. And half normal saline is half of this is hypotonic solution. So answer choice is one, two, three, and then, oh, this is four, five, and six. So one, two, three, four, four, and four. Those are the right answers. So one, two, four are the right answers. Okay, um, let's get to it. Now let's go to the lecture and you will figure out why those answers are, are right. So fluid, very difficult topic, but like I said, I will make it easy as much as possible. Think about it. Our body, we live in a compartment, okay? Everything is compartmentalized. And then we, we, we've divided into extracellular fluid and an intracellular fluid. This is inside the cell and outside the cell. But before we talk about it, our body is made of fluid. It needs fluid to function. All the cells need fluids. That's why when you don't drink fluid, you get dehydrated and you, your body can't function properly. So this is what we have. So you have to know certain key factors. So your body, you have body fluid, okay? You have a certain fluid in your body. And that make up your body weight. So body weight. Right. So the, the total amount of fluid that you have in for an adult. So an adult, our total fluid, okay, um, body fluid is about 50, 50 to 60% of your 50% of your body weight, basically total body weight. And infants usually have more, they have more fluid. So they have their total uh, body fluid, okay? That means water, how much water is in there, is in their body is equal to about 75% to 80% and percent of their weight, so the total weight. 
to dash the way to remember that. We usually, when we're doing calculation, we use average American or average man. It's usually we think they are 70 kilos. Okay. Because of that, an estimation you can make. So one kilo is equivalent to one liter of body fluid. Right. So average man is 70 kilos. And for every kilo of that body, uh, there's one liter of fluid. So they have about 70 um, liters of fluid. Right. So if we said this, that if we said that adult has 50 to 60% of their body weight of fluid, then we can calculate and say, if I, we take the upper portion, 60 times 100, 60 over 100 times um, the 70 liters, well, they will be left with what? 56 liters. That's how much fluid you have in your body. Okay. So though we have about 56 liters of fluid. And so that's the total of fluid of water. That's 60 to 60% 60 of our total body weight. Then think about it. Okay, this 50%, 56 liters is what is divided into extracellular fluid. That is what is inside the cell. And then extracellular fluid that is outside the cell the fluid that is bathing if this is the cell intracellular means inside and then there's a fluid bathing the cell the intracellular fluid take about two thirds so two over three of this 56 liters and extracellular take one third and third times what 56 and this will give you what one third of this will give you 18.7 liters. So our extracellular fluid about has about, this has about 18.7 liters. If you subtract this from the 56, you will get the intracellular fluid. We don't need it, so we don't need to do anything about it. I'm, I'm more concerned about the extracellular fluid. So 18.7. It is the most uh, important value that we want to worry about. That is the extracellular fluid right there, right? Now, there's one more thing you have to worry about. Extracellular fluid is also divided into two, okay? It has both intravascular fluid. That means that is what made up of the plasma, intravascular fluid. So this is intravascular fluid. This is the plasma. And then we have interstitial fluid. This is outside the plasma. This is what is in the tissue, interstitial. So interstitial fluid. So the interstitial fluid. And the division is the interstitial fluid take about three, three fourths. And the intracellular, flu uh, intravascular fluid take one fourth. So one fourth of the eighteen point five point seven liters is equal to five liters, close to five liters. This is our blood volume. That's why we say we have amount of five liters of fluid in our system. So this is our blood volume. Most of this is mostly plasma, and this is how you calculate all this. Um, uh, issue and then so you can see that we have five liters of fluid in the plasma intravascular fluid so i will recap it and you see what, what i did so i said our body is made up of these two we have this is into our cellular fluid extracellular fluid right and this is what constitutes about 50 to 60% of your weight. And when we calculate, we get about five, 56 liters using one kilo as a, um, one, is equal to one liter. And the extracellular fluid is divided into um, interstitial. So this is interstitial fluid. 
and this is also intravascular fluid. Interstitial, like I said, made up of three fourths, and intravascular is one fourth. And when you calculate, do the calculation, first you got to calculate extracellular fluid. So extracellular is one third, okay, of the total body water, and then intracellular is two third. And when you calculate, you get an 18.7. Um, and uh, if you, you we worry about the intra intravascular, we end up having five liters. This is where the plasma stay in your system. So that is the body composition of it. The clue is the intravascular or the extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid, that the fluid inside the cell is separated by this membrane. This is what we call uh, cell membrane, okay? This is a it's semi permeable and they allow communication. So electrolyte to move from one place to another back and forth, but they want to maintain their concentration constant. So the concentration in the intra, intracellular and extracellular are always maintained constant. You don't want anything to change. That is keeping the body in immunostasis. So body try to prevent any changes. If one electrolyte moves to another place, another one has to replace it so that the body will be in a state of uh, immunostasis. So there's certain electrolyte in the extracellular fluid, like sodium, okay, chloride, is very prominent in extracellular fluid. In the intracellular fluid, you have potassium there, more potassium there. So potassium like to stay there um, inside the cell. Phosphorus like to stay inside the cell. Magnesium like to stay inside the cell. There's calcium outside the cell and there's a um, bicarbonate. So these are electrolytes that like to stay outside the cell, extracellular and intracellular potassium, phosphate, and magnesium. So when one move, the other one has to be placed in order to ensure that the uh, um, electrolyte balance is maintained. So this is the brief in terms of the compartment and how much fluid we have in our system and how it works. So you're going to apply it when you're thinking about electrolyte question. So now they, they will let you know what is fluid deficit and uh, fluid excess? Your body, like I said, we try to maintain that five liters of flu uh, in intravascular fluid in the plasma constant. Whenever we're referring to a fluid system, think about the extracellular. Don't think about the intracellular. We don't see the intracellular fluid too much. Every time we're talking about fluid, the extracellular fluid, uh, is the most important and most specifically is the intravascular inside the vessel intravascular which uh, is one third of that and this is the two third of the extracellular and fluid and this is the five liters this is what we focus on this is the interstitial this is what is inside tissue so when we say somebody is fluid deficit, that means they've lost okay, fluid from the extracellular system, mostly intravascular. So you've lost then what your body needs. Your body needs to maintain that five liters. So the five liters is down. Um, and then the common in situation is like when you get dehydrated. So dehydration. So dehydration is the most common loss of fluid. Okay. Um, example like GI loss, okay. you lose it through the GI, you get diarrhea or you're bleeding, hemorrhage. It's another cause of uh, fluid loss, okay? Or if you have a burn, you lose a lot of fluid from the skin being um, lost. Or if you're taking diuretic, okay, like uh, furosemide, you know, diuretic, um, you have less water in your system, and then they don't have test. So they always dehydrated old people. So these are conditions that can lead to fluid uh, lost. Okay. When you lose this kind of fluid, 
remember you're just losing a fluid uh, from the extracellular fluid you're not adding anything you don't putting anything to that so mostly these are isotonic fluid but we'll come back to that so this is gi loss fluid deficit losing fluid how would the patient present i don't want you to memorize it if you dehydrate it you lose fluid how would you present i don't expect your blood pressure to be normal right so hypotension so orthostatic hypotension right when i look at your skin it should it be third i mean right in poor skin third right it just um you don't memorize it if i check your pores your pores is going to be treaded right it's not going to be fast it's going to be treaded pores these are all signs of dehydration i uh, measure your capillary refill it's not going to be less than three seconds so cap refill should be higher than three seconds because you 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 you've lost some fluid, right? Um, you're going to get weak or fatigue, right? Um, if I look at your neck, your central venous pressure is going not going to be normal. So your CVP usually is two to eight is going to go down. So it should be less than that. So low CVP is going to be low. Two to eight is normal, so you expect the normal to go down. And if you look at your neck, the neck vein will be flat, flat neck vein. That's the JVD. So JVD, jugular vein distension will not be there. So that's why you use the word flat JVD. There's no jugular vein distension. Your CVP is low. The fatigue, the weak, the cap refill is low. And then uh, all those signs, it's consistent. And sometimes when it's continue to go, urine output is low. Okay, so the urine output is low. So those are signs and symptoms of fluid deficit. You've lost some fluid. Okay, guess what? Your examiner, so this is dehydration. They can trick you and say, what lab work do you see? Well, BUN is going to go up. Right, creatinine up, hemoglobin up because it's concentrated now, uh, hematocrit up, right? All those signs. If you checked urine specific gravity, it's going to be high, concentrated. What is the normal? It's greater than the 0 0.0 and uh, 0 0.1.030, so it's going to be higher than that. Usually, the normal. Uh, level is that is you have zero 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 three to one point zero three zero. This is normal. When you dehydrated, this normal should be higher. So it should be greater than one point zero three zero. That's the higher normal. So you expect that to be high, and and the urine get concentrated. So signs and symptoms of these are causes of dehydration. Lab work for dehydration. Signs and symptoms for dehydration. I've created a setup for you so that you can use it. Um, you can take notes about it. So this is a setup question right there. Okay. The opposite is when you do not lose the fluid, you gain a bunch of fluid. And this fluid usually stay in the extracellular fluid. So instead of having five liters in the extracellular fluid, you have more than that. So you gain some fluid. So what condition will let you hold on to fluid? The renal failure, that's why they have dialysis. So renal failure. Cirrhosis people, people who have uh, liver disease, they hold on to some uh, fluid. Okay, if you burn, you have burned wound to, you can start to pull fluid later in the, um, in the course of the injury. They too, they can retain some fluid. That's why they swell up. Um, if you take too much water, okay, Excessive intake. There's some psychotic problem where they, they drink a lot of water and they take too much. And a long-term steroid use can make you hold on to water. That's why your blood pressure goes up. It's long-term steroid use. These are conditions, common conditions that can do that. 
with our signs and symptoms. You don't have to memorize it. Look at the other one. If you, you have too much fluid, your blood pressure goes up. So BP goes up, right? Your skin, what do you think your skin is going to look like? The skin, uh, it's like really tight. It's not going to be uh, poor, right? Um, so skin, target. Your blood pressure goes up, they can be tachycardia. So you can tachycardia or tachypnic. You start breathing faster, right? As you hear some crackles in your lungs, right? You start coughing, all these signs like, you know, you're getting pulmonary edema. Uh, you should have dyspnea. All those signs, you just, you, you just think about a pathophysiology and that will help you understand what is going on. Um, if their pulse is not going to be Freddy, it will be bounding pause when you when you listen to it. And we talk about the JVD, jungular vision distension. If I look at your neck, it should be distended. And your CVP should be greater than the normal. And the normal is two to eight. So I should expect your normal to be probably like 15, 18, 20, you know, something like that. So greater than that normal, greater than this normal. So CVP should be greater than two to eight. So it should be higher than norm that normal. Um, they should have edema, right? PD edema. I'm no, I don't want you to memorize it, but you can make it up. You can say, oh, we have too much fluid. So this is what is going to happen. They will gain weight, weight gain. And guess what? We talk about it. I told you um one kilo. You can say it's equivalent to one liter. So if you gain one, uh, you hold on to one liter of fluid, you gain one kilo. Okay. And so the same thing. When they ask you for lab work, well, you can check the lab work and see it, um, those numbers is going to go down. So BUN, Piatni, uh, sodium, um, imethylcrate. All of them is going to go down because you have too much fluid on board. So you have to know the causes, signs and symptoms, and what you see in the lab. And those questions, dehydration questions, are straightforward. If you know this patient is dehydrated, this is what I'm supposed to see, and this is what is the condition. Okay, so that's that one. Um, so let me claim that one. Now, we have a question. So, a nurse is caring for a client with dehydration. Patient is dehydrated, right? Which fi assessment finding is uh, consistent with the diagnosis? Select or apply. So, SATA, assessment finding consistent with the diagnosis. What diagnosis? Dehydration. And you already know dehydration, they lost fluid. So, the uh, extracellular fluid is down. So they will show signs and symptoms of loss of fluid, ready? Really? No. Yeah. The pause is going to be ready, not bounding. So you got it. So ready pause, right? CVP, what do you want it? Which direction you want it to go? The CVP is going to go down. The neck vein will be flat. So this is too high. Normal is two to eight. So it should be lower than this, so this is wrong. Look, oligoyuria. So urine output low, yes. Four skin tega, right? Yeah. And crackles in the lung, no. So tready pause, low urine output, and poor skin tega are what you expect in the patient with the um, dehydration. You don't expect your CVP to be 15. You don't expect them to have crackles in the lung. That's consistent with fluid overloaded. So the answer choice is one, three, and five. And this is the way the question is going to be. They can answer, ask you any other question. And you see, this is like um, straightforward, um, you knowing what the direction of the problem should go. Type of fluid. The type of fluid is slightly complicated. Okay, it's a little bit complicated. 
uh, that let me make it easy for you. We have different kind of fluid and then when to use it. We have isotonic, we have hypertonic, and we have hypotonic. And when, when I, we, we were talking, I told you everything is in relation to the extracellular fluid. That's all you care about, extracellular fluid. And I told you extracellular fluid each, and the intracellular fluid try to maintain their concentration to be normal. Is this extracellular fluid concentration is close to like normal saline, 0.9%, okay? Normal saline. So this is your baseline. When we say isotonic, that means it's the same as the extracellular fluid. So same. So the concentration. When you say hypertonic, that means it's greater than extracellular fluid. That means it's greater than 0.9%. And when you say hypo, so this is greater. When you say hypo, it's less than, I would say, 0.9%. This is greater than 0.9% of normal saline. That is the easy way to um, think about it. There is a condition when we say state. So we have a state and a fluid state. Body fluid, body state, when we say the body state is the condition where you are in, extracellular fluid. It's different from the fluid. So you can be hyponatreme, uh, hypotonic or hyponatremic state or hypernatremic state. Or you can just be in the isotonic state. This is where your concentration of the extracellular fluid is 0.9, normal. This is hypertonic. That means you have high concentration, so it's high now. Extracellular fluid concentration is now high. Hypo, extracellular fluid is low. So when we say somebody is hyponatremic, we're referring to the extracellular fluid. That means the concentration is less than 0.9% um, of normal saline, which is, that means the sodium is less than the normal, like I'll pick 145. If it's hypertonic, it's greater than that. If isotonic, the same. So I just want you to see this simple, straightforward. That's the way you can remember. The fluid state is different from your body state. So when we say somebody is hypotonic state, uh, that means they are they are hyponatremic. If they are in a hyper, uh, hypotonic state, then they are hypernatremic. Isotonic state, they are in the same state uh, of the extracellular fluid. Okay, now. Let's think, how do you use this fluid? So first you have to know which one they are. So isotonic, that means you have the same concentration of the extracellular fluid. And I told you the baseline is 0.9, like 0.9% of normal saline. So this is one of them. And lactate ringer, these are the common isotonic fluid. Um, there's another fluid which is D5 dextrose in water. This is isotonic, but pay attention, isotonic. But when you get into your body, your liver break down the glucose. And now this become hypotonic solution. That's why we consider D5W as hypotonic solution inside the cell when or inside you, inside you. When we put this inside you, we make you hypotonic solution. We've given you hypotonic solution. But if you're sitting in your floor on the ward, not in any patient, it's, hyper, it's isotonic solution. So that is the difference between D5 the view on the ward and D5 the view when you give it to the patient. When you give it to the patient, it becomes an hypotonic solution because the liver break it down. But when you have not given it to the patient, it's isotonic solution. So these are the medications that the common ones you have.
When do you use this? Is when somebody has lost the extracellular fluid, just with that, he just lost the same extracellular fluid. Never, nothing was added to that. It just like, lost the systemic fluid. And common one is like bleeding. When you're bleeding, yeah, you have lost the extracellular fluid hemorrhage. Or you get dehydrated is also one common way. Uh, if you have burn wound, you lost in your extracellular fluid. Um, or you're vomiting. Vomiting, diarrhea. They are all source of, that means GI lost, source of um, isotonic and this thing. And so when somebody have this problem, the fluid you would choose is this. If you're bleeding, I give you isotonic. That, so if you come in dehydrated, I give you isotonic solution. If you have a burn wound, I give you isotonic solution. If you're vomiting, I give you isotonic solution. If you have diarrhea, GI loss, I give you this. So this is what we use. This is the fluid we choose. Don't give them D5W. Like I said, when you give it to them, they come in dehydrated. Well, your liver metabolize it and they become hypotonic. But in the answer choice, when they list it and they say select which one is uh, isotonic, yeah, it's still an isotonic. It's different from giving it to the patient, then it become hypotonic. If you have to give it to the patient, yeah, I won't choose hypotonic solution for somebody who is dehydrated. So this is what you use for that situation. What it does is it does not allow movement of fluid. There's always a movement of fluid from extracellular fluid to the uh, intracellular fluid back and forth in order to ensure that the concentration are the same. If I give you isotonic solution, no movement. So everything is stable. Perfect. So that's that one. Now, the next problem is IPA, tonic solution. Think about it. Your baseline is normal saline 0.9%. I have to give you something that is greater than that, greater than 0.9%. Greater than so I told you um, that the normal is greater than 0.9, then it's good. So I'll give you 3% of normal saline instead of uh, 0.9. It's greater than that, right? 5% normal saline is hypertonic solution, right? 10% normal saline is hypertonic solution, right? D50, okay? That means 50% of dextrose is hypertonic solution, right? D5W, not alone. If you had it to, if you had it to 0.9% of normal saline, it become hypertonic solution. If you give D5W to LR, it become hypertonic solution. If you give D5W, plus half, half of the normal saline is also become hypertonic solution. So these are your hypertonic solutions that you have to know. Just know that anything greater than a 0.9 normal saline, you have to choose it. So three normal saline, 5%, 10%, LR is not hypertonic solution. Then you go to D50 or D10. All of them is hypertonic solution. But if you, Take a D5W and you had it to normal saline or D5 or LR and this, they, you created an hypertonic solution. What is the problem? They are, uh, what, what condition usually you see this in, in a patient who have lost extracellular fluid? They, they, they basically, they, they have in the severe eye patient, in the patient who have severe hyponatremia, that you have to give them this medication in order to replace it. So these are used for a patient who have severe hyponatremia so that we can replace their sodium as soon as possible, right? We have to replace their sodium because now the, their sodium level is very low. So you give this hypertonic solution 
for somebody. So this is the extracellular fluid. The sodium, the condition is what? Hypotonic. So a hypotonic condition, we give them hypertonic fluid. It's opposite. So now I have to give them hypertonic fluid to ensure that their low sodium state will be high. So you give them this. So that's the fluid you give them. There is fluid shift, uh, but it, it can complicate it. Sometimes it confuses people. Don't worry about it. Just know that if you are in hypotonic state, or that means hyponatremic, I need to give you something that is concentrated than your state. So I need to give you hypertonic fluid. And that is this problem. And this is what happens if your sodium is like maybe like 130, patient who have SIDH, yeah, it's not good. They, they, they are in the SIDH form or adrenal insufficiency where they lose a lot of um, the, their sodium. Yeah, this is the medication you give them. You give them hypertonic and, 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 and situation in order to improve uh, their sodium. Okay, so yeah, you use hypertonic fluid to improve somebody hypotonic state. That means their sodium is low. So their sodium is low, and then we have to improve that. We have to improve, especially if they have like um, cerebral edema. Yeah, this will help take away the fluid from the brain, give them hypertonic state and solution to improve that. So that is what you use. And then finally, you can have the hypotonic fluid. So hypotonic. Hypotonic fluid is a fluid that has lower concentration than the extracellular fluid. It's hypo. So it has lower than extracellular fluid concentration. And if the extracellular fluid is 0.9 and uh, normal saline, well, I have to give them something lower than normal saline. So which fluid is hypotonic? Where well, half of the normal saline, so 4.5% normal saline is hypotonic, right? If you give them D2.5% the uh, plus half of the normal saline, it's still hypotonic uh, solution. And then if you give them D5W, remember, if it get into your system, it become hypo, hypotonic solution. So when do you use this? Think about it. When do you use it? If I have to give you something to make your extracellular fluid lower, right? So this is the extracellular fluid. This is the intracellular fluid. I'm giving you something to lower your extracellular fluid. That means your intracellular fluid, extracellular fluid is already high. So this is what you give them in hypertonic state. So the yeah, sodium is like 150. Yeah. So they are in hypertonic state. That means they are hypernatremic. Sodium is high. You give them something to lower the extracellular fluid. You give them something that has the lower concentration of the 0.9. So you give them those medications, 0.45%, uh, 2.25%, uh, 2, and that. So this is what you use for somebody like if they have diabetes um, insipidus. They're losing water and they are they are in hypertonic state. Their sodium is so high, and so you have to give them something with a lower concentration of that. So this is used for intracellular, that's what we call intracellular dehydration. When they have intracellular dehydration, not isotonic dehydration, intracellular dehydration, like the 
and uh, uh, di diabetic insipidus, yeah, you give them um, these medications, hypotonic solution for an hypertonic state. Okay, so summary. This is the summary. I'll make a table for you. Isotonic state, I give you, that means you have the same concentration as the uh, extracellular and you've lost fluid, I give you isotonic fluid. If you are in hypotonic state, that means your sodium is already low, where I give you hypertonic fluid. If you are in hypertonic state, that means your sodium is too high, I give you hypotonic fluid. What is isotonic fluid? It's normal saline, like we said. So isotonic, isotonic is normal saline, 0.9%. And LR and D5W. But if you put it inside the patient cells, it becomes hypotonic. So that's why we don't use it for resuscitation if you come in with dehydration. What is hypertonic? I mean, a mistake here. So, what is hypertonic fluid? That means fluid with higher concentration than greater than 0.9 percent of normal saline. Yeah, so there's a bunch of them. You have like D10, right? D50, um, 3%, 5%, 10% normal saline. Then you can have D5 added to any of them. So D5 add to LR, normal saline, or half normal saline, they are all one of them. So half normal. Then hypotonic, we say anything less than, less than 0.9. So I give you half, 0.5% or 0.45% of normal saline or D two and a half plus half normal saline or D five like isotonic. That's the way you memorize it. Straightforward. Okay. The state is the condition and the fluid is different. So it's opposite. Whatever state you are in is opposite. If you're in a hypotonic state, that means your sodium is high, I give you low uh, hypotonic fluid. So SIDH, think, you have to think about a clinical problem first. Then you can answer this question. Um, somebody who's hyponatremic from something, yeah, then you choose your appropriate medication. You have to find out what state the patient is. Usually they will give you a lab work and they will tell you, you can tell which state is the patient is in. Okay, so key electrolytes. These things are usually, you got to have a way to remember them. You have to have a way to remember them. And the best way is to have a, 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 a something to look up to for and what strategy you want to use. So we will talk about potassium, magnesium, calcium, and then sodium. And those are the things you should, you should be thinking about, electrolytes that you should worry about. Okay, so we start with K. Potassium, usually inside the cell. So inside cell. That's where it's mostly. And what can affect your potassium? Hypokalemia, we start with hypokalemia. 
what is the condition that can lead to low potassium? Yes, when you take steroids, it will lead to, if you take diuretic, it will lead, will lead to positives, will lead to that. Um, if you have ileostomy, yeah, wound will lead to hyponatremia. Uh, diarrhea will lead to hyponatremia. And if you have wound, certain wounds will lead to that. Okay. And one thing I want you to know is this alkalosis. Alkalosis leads to hyponatremia because your body pushes out acid and exchange it with um, uh, potassium inside the cell. And that's why alkalosis leads to hypokalemia. So the best way to remember these things is what kind of signs and symptoms. Think about the main organs in your body, your heart, so cardiac, okay? So heart, brain, right? Neurovascular, your muscle, that help you work, right? So muscle, right? Um, the GI tract. GI tract is also good organ. And your kidney is a good organ. Think about them. And I don't want you to memorize them. Think about them. Okay, these are main thing, and sometimes you're long. Okay, for potassium, all the symptoms that you're going to see: hypokalemia. If you have hypokalemia, it's going to move in the same direction of the problem you have, except the organ, except this heart and your kidney. So this. And this will move in the same direction. If his potassium is low, the symptoms has to be low. Except your heart. Your heart, the symptoms goes up. And your kidney also go up. So what does that mean? If you have hypokalemia, your heart rate is going to go up. So you have tachycardia. Your kidney, urine output will increase in order to get rid of it, right? But the rest of your body, everything starts going down, okay? The lung, you have the opinion, your, 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 your respiratory rate goes down. GI tract, you get constipation. Muscle, it get weaker, and it flaccid, and it cramps, okay? And your brain, you become lethargic. But I don't want to list physical findings because it's hard to memorize them. Just you have used a simple thing. If you have hypokalemia, everything goes down except brain and your kidney. So if they give you symptoms, look at the symptoms. So oh, these symptoms, is it going up and down? And I'm choosing it. So hypokalemia, this is what you see. Symptoms, all organs is going down, except the brain and the kidney. Okay, so how do you treat it? Give them some potassium. Potassium can only be given, you cannot, you, um, you, you have to regulate it with the pump, so you gotta regulate how fast, how much it goes. You can't just run it in the uh, in, 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 IV piggyback without, any um, pump, you need a pump, so you need a pump, and you have to regulate it, and you give 10 milli equivalent for every hour. So 40, if I give you 40 milli equivalent, you have to run it over four hours. You cannot run it faster than this. So please, this is key, okay? On the EKG hypokalemia, the changes, uh, a lot. So EKG, look for flat, flattened and or invected T waves. So this is flat or invected. It flip up T waves. That is the most common. So this is, if the, if this this is the um, EKG, the T waves will be like that, flattened T waves, and that is the hypokalemia. I don't want you to memorize anything. Just see the direction 
And whenever they give you, they can because they have so many symptoms to give you. If you've never seen it before, you don't know what it is. If you sound like it's going up, then choose it. If you're going down, then. So for hypokalemia, everything goes down, except the kid a kidney and the um the heart. The opposite is true. For hyperkalemia, what condition can do that? Something that will increase your potassium. So kidney failure, renal failure. Taking ACE inhibitor, right? It's not good. If they have adenosine, so adrenal insufficiency. If taking spironolactone, it will increase that. If hypokalemia is caused by alkalosis, say hyper is caused by acidosis. Okay. Same thing. Signs and symptoms. Signs and symptoms. We talk about main organ, your kidney, your heart, your lung, brain, reflexes, GI tract, whatever you have. Because this is hyper, it's already referred to just the kidney and the heart. So if it's hyper, kidney goes down, heart goes down, the rest of them up, up, their symptoms goes up. So when you see diarrhea, GI is going up because it's hyperkalemia. Reflex is going up, yes, hyperkalemia. The only thing that goes down is the kidney and the heart. That's the way I want you to study. You don't have to memorize it. I'm not going to list them. What kind of signs and symptoms? I don't care. Look at it and see if it's going up. That's the best way to uh, study this kind of thing. So EKG, the T wave for the IPO is um, invented. This T wave is PIC. PIC T wave. We call it PIC T wave. And then you have to know how to um, replace and uh, correct the hyperkalemia. So hyperkalemia, how do you treat it? Give them insulin, regular insulin. And D5, and D5W. They give them D5W with regular insulin, followed by um, you give them K-acylate. This is what is going to get rid of it from the GI tract, okay? Abudra also is good to push it inside the cell, okay? Um, give them calcium gluconate. And if it doesn't, they will need dialysis. But if they give you a question and they say patient is hyperkalemic, the normal one, normal one thing you should do is to protect the heart. And to protect the heart, the first medication you give them is calcium gluconate, one gram. One gram will protect the heart from uh, toxicity. So that's the first thing you give them before you give them all this medication. Of course, you get an EKG, you see a peak T wave, give them calcium gluconate, move them to the ICU, and then give them insulin, plus regular insulin, plus D5W, K-acylate, abutyrol, and that will correct the problem. So that's how you correct it. They will need some dialysis to take care of it. So that's the first electrolyte. Sodium is notorious, so sodium. It doesn't follow that pathway, okay? It doesn't follow the pathway of high and low. So there's few things I want you to pay attention to. So hypo, hyponatremia, that means they are sodium, they are in hyponatremic state. Sodium is less than 145, right? Um, close to probably like 130, you know, that's not good. So the problem that causes that is GI, SIDH, Um, adrenal insufficiency uh, can go do that, like Addison. Uh, if you're not eating NPO state for a long time, or you drink a lot of water, so water intoxication. 
these are conditions that can do that. Or sweaty a lot. So heat stroke, so excessive diaphoresis. Or sometimes medication. Okay, so hyponatremic. The number one thing you have to know, think about SIDH. Number one is seizure precaution. This is the most important. We have to make sure that the patient is no seizure. That's number one. So that's the neurological problem you should be looking for. They can get headache. The symptoms are almost the same with iPad. They can have GI symptoms like vomiting. Oh, and diarrhea. But number one, for hyponatremia, if you confusion, if you really, really want to save this patient, watch them for seizures, so seizure pr protocol. And you have to control this. You have to treat this. They are hyponatremia, like we said. They are in hyponatremic state. You give them a fluid that is greater than this. So give them hypertonic solution. So you give them hypertonic tonic solution. So all solution has to be hypertonic solution. So the treatment is either 3%, 5%, normal saline. It's the best choice. Okay. It's the best choice and put them in the uh, seizure precaution. And that's for hyponatremia. That's all. Don't worry about a D5W because most of the time when you're doing this is for brain and other thing. So I'll choose this medic this option, three, five percent um normal saline rather than any other um medication uh, to replace the problem. The other one is hypernatremia. That means your sodium is good enough, 145. Okay. And this mm -hmm. one, if you get dehydrated, yeah, it can happen. You lose a lot of water. If you lose it from your GI tract, um, if you, you have too much adulteration, that's what we call Crohn's disease. Or if you have like a and DI, diabetes insipidus, you lose all the water, yeah, or you take steroids for too long. That's what is going to happen. So their sodium is now too high. They are in what state? Hypernatremic state. You got to give them hypotonic solution. Okay, so that we can dilute. They, we don't, they don't need any more, any more sodium. Yeah, so you can give them D5W, okay? Okay. You can give them the 2.5%, 2.5 plus and one fourth normal saline. Yeah, you give them that and that will dilute the problem or let them drink water, free water, free water intake. And that is the treatment for hyponatremic. Straightforward. Signs and symptoms. Think, think about it. Don't memorize it. Now their blood is so thick. Blood is so thick. They start having fever. They've lost all the water. So they start having fever. That's one common sign. And their tongue is so swollen. Swollen and dry tongue. Dry tongue. Um, they can be lethargic. Instead of the seizure, you have lethargy, but day to day can have lethargy uh, seizure. Um, and then their tongue will be, mucus maybe will be sticky. Everything is sticky. And they can hallucinate. So these are some of the, the most common ones, swollen and, uh, and sticky tongue, lethargic and hallucinate. So those are the symptoms you see for them. And so the next one is calcium. That one is straightforward. It follows the same thing, calcium. Now you see, we don't want to memorize anything. 
what causes hypocalcemia? Well, the, the, the hormones that control calcium is PTH. Therefore, if you have hypo PTH, yeah, your calcium become low. If you have hypo magnesium, your calcium become low. If you have vitamin D deficiency, yeah, calcium become low. Okay, if you lose it from your GI tract, diarrhea, yeah, your magnesium become low. Okay, um, those, if you don't take in too much, yeah. And most of the time, the kidney is involved with the absorption. So if kidney, kidney renal failure is also one place you lose it. Okay. Signs and symptoms. Your key organs, right? We talk about what are your key organs. That's your key organs. Your kidney, your heart, your lung, your GI, your bra brain, your muscle, neuro, all of this will be involved, right? What is going to happen? The, the kidney is the only one that move in the different direction. All of this is going to move in the same direction, opposite direction as the, uh, um, the problem that you have. You have hypo, Calcemia. So that means calcium is down. It's only the kidney that stay. But all these people, they say, I'm not happy. We go up. We go up. So all the symptoms from this, the heart, tachycardia, long, they breathing fast. Um, GI tract, they have a diarrhea, muscle twitching all over. Yeah, symptoms is hard here. Yeah. I'm not going to list them, but I want, that's the way I want it to die. Kidney symptoms, symptoms is going to go down. So low urine output and everything. The only symptoms I will me mention is uh, these two guys, okay? These two guys that you already know. That usually they like accent. Is to show signs and chauvistic signs. So this one, one is related to blood pressure cuff. You put a blood pressure cuff in your hand and you you blow it up, and because of low calcium, they undergo carpal pedal spasm. So they have carpal pedal spasm. And this, when you tap the facial nerve, they have spasm of that twitching of that muscles. And so those are the signs. If you see these signs, it means hypocalcemia. Treatment, give them calcium. That's all. Replacement of the calcium is the treatment of choice uh, for this problem. Um, it's very important that you monitoring them and making sure you don't give them too much calcium because that's not going to be good. So replace the calcium. They will need vitamin D, okay? Vitamin D to help with that. Um, remember, calcium is given in D5W, no normal saline. Otherwise, it will crystallize normal saline. So you give it in D5W. So that is that one. So you should expect IPA. Calcemia to do something different. So hypercalcemia condition. The condition is different. So the, what causes it is hyper PTH. If you have too too much PTH, yeah, it's going to cause it. Sometimes cancer, malignant cancer that go into the bone, and then it causes metastasis and the calcium um, released. Immobilization. If you stay at one place for a long time, yeah, it's not good. Vitamin D, SS, you take it too much. If you take um, calcium supplement too much, or thiazide, thiazide is one thing that can cause hypercalcemia. So hydrochlorothiazide, 
that can also causes that. Okay, same thing, signs and symptoms, like we talk about, I told you, is the only kidney that move in the opposite direction. Kidney, because this is higher, because this is higher, kidney goes up. The rest, everything goes down. Everybody start to go down. So, Symptoms is going to go down. GI tract, you get constipation. Neurovascular system start to go down. Flaccid reflexes goes down. Everything goes down except the kidney. You make more urine output. That's all. That's the way I'm not going to say too much because when we lead, give you too much symptoms, then you get confused because uh, you you have you forced to memorize them, but just know every organ system, their symptoms is going to go down with hypercalcemia. Every except the kidney, which goes up with the uh, problem that you have. That's all. That's all I'm going to say. Treatment: they have so many calcium, too many calcium. You give them fluid to let them pee it out. That's why the urine output is high. Okay, and then. You take care of the calcium. First, you can, and they need cardiac monitor, okay? So they need to be in a cardiac monitor to monitor them. You let them pee out, so you give them laces of furosemide. Give them furosemide to let them pee out. There's something to bind to the calcium, calcitonin. Give it to them. And then another one is bisphosphonate. That prevent bone breakdown. Yes, and then you can give them steroid. So treatment for hypercalcemia, fluid. Then furosemide. Then calcitonin. Then bisphosphonate. and some steroids. Cardiac monitoring is needed. Okay. The last one is magnesium. I'm not going to say too much about it because you already had, had it. Magnesium is same as calcium. Same as calcium, magnesium, same as calcium. So my, uh, if you have hypo magnesium, right everybody symptoms goes up except kidney that goes down if you have hyper magnesium everybody goes down except kidney that goes up like the um like the like the calcium but the most important thing I need you to let you know is you cannot replace, can't replace magnesium without calcium. So when somebody have low magnesium, they need calcium replacement. Um, the treatment is the same. And the management is the same. So pay attention to the, the way, the, which direction it go. And so this is the, this is what I wanted to show you. As you can see, this is a fluid electrolyte. Try to make it easy as much as possible. It's not that easy because of the things batched. The, the direction you should follow and the key things because you don't have to memorize symptoms. So I'm not giving you too much symptoms. Okay. So this is a last question. And this is caring for a client with the following lab value, potassium of this, sodium of that, creatinine, BUN, calcium. Which of the following medication the next should question? So you have a, so set a question. You have potassium that is low, sodium look normal, creatinine that is high, BUN that is high, calcium that is normal. Which of the following you should question? Select or apply. Coumadin. 
It has nothing to do with this, so we cancel it. Being denied. This is a uh, is parasimide loop diuretic. What did they cause? Hypokalemia. It causes hypokalemia, so it's a problem. They may cause hyponatremia, but this sodium is high, so it's okay. So, but the main thing they cause is hypokalemia. Therefore, I should worry about this sodium, um, this potassium 3.3. He took rack. This is Torado. This is NSAID. Why should I stop this? Creatinine is 2.2. .2. It affects the kidney and BUN. So you should hold this. Metformin, yeah. Creatinine is 2.2. .2. It's too high. Lorsartan, what is that medication? That's ARB, right? What does ARB does? Because it's hyperkalemia. It's the same thing as ACE inhibitor. It causes hyperkalemia. So we don't need to hold this. Spinolactone is also spare potassium. So we will improve your potassium. So the only medication you have to hold is furosemide that will cause hyponatremia, or bumitinide, ketochloride that will cause kidney problem, metformin that causes that, and the rest is fine. So that's how they ask the electrolyte question. So, Let's see if there's another more question. So that's the end of it. So we go back to the first question and you mm -hmm. can see that a nurse is caring for a client who need hypertonic solution infusion. Which of the following should the nurse select? As you can see, this is hypertonic fluid. It's hypertonic fluid. This is hypertonic fluid. This is also an hypertonic fluid. This is also hypertonic fluid. These are not, right? Therefore, therefore, the answer is one, two, three, four, once again, four. One to four are the right answer. Thank you for staying around and then keep charging. Subscribe to the channel for more content like that. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.